Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. I'm gonna share with you how I backed my scrum quilt with double gauze. Now, I've always wanted to use gauze on the back of one of my quilts. So when it was on sale a couple of months ago, I bought a bunch of it. I just loved the way that it felt against my skin. I have to tell you, it came out pristine. I will take you through all of the steps on how I made my scrum quilt. Enough talking already. Let's get busy backing our scrum quilt with gauze. The gauze that I purchased is on sale right now at Joanne Fabric. Even though it's not stated in the description at Joanne's, this has two layers of gauze in it. Let me show you. Now these aren't pulled apart easily and there are tiny stay stitches all throughout the fabric, helping those two layers stay together. It is a very airy and soft fabric. I basted this quilt a little differently than normal. I pin basted it while it hung from my design board. The first thing I did was to clip my batting up onto my design wall. Now I'm only going to pin base the quilt top and the batting. I will add the backing at the end after I've free motion quilted the entire quilt. More on that later. Did you know there's a right and wrong side to your batting? If your batting has been needle punched, then you need to know the right and wrong side. Take a look at my cotton batting right here. All of those tiny holes are very visible. When they made this cotton batting, this is the needle hole punch path that their needle went. So when we go to free motion quilt our quilt, we need to make sure that our needle follows their same path. If we don't follow that same path, then something called bearding happens. So the holes on my batting are facing outward and I'm going to lay my quilt top right on top of that. When I put my scrum quilt top on top of the batting, I was sure to pin it with my basting pins, just like you see right here, just to keep it in place for a minute so I can get things situated. I was sure to leave overhang of the batting being bigger than my quilt top. I did put a couple pins on the sides of my batting into my design wall just to keep the sides up and taut a bit. Once I had it roughly where I wanted it, then it was time to baste those two pieces together. And of course, you know I'm going to use my brand new notion that I just made. Remember, I was doing this for the first time up on the wall, so it was a little interesting at first. But honestly, it ended up working out great. I took my hands and spread that quilt top as I pinned, and that really did help things lay nicely. And being that it was only the quilt top and the cotton batting, they sort of stuck together on their own. I think it really helped to have that cardboard backing on my design wall too, because the pins just glided over it and I didn't stick through any cardboard. My design wall board is actually called a super board and Dritz makes it. Pin basting on the wall was actually really quick. I was shocked. So you can see here, I put a basting pin in every single scrum block and in between those scrum blocks. To build my confidence for the next step, the free motion quilting, I actually drew onto my quilt top with some water soluble marker, the feathers that I wanted all around each of the scrum blocks. That just guided me and helped me for the first one. I had a lot of negative space on this quilt, so it was going to be a lot of fun. It was like a free for all, but I did have to make sure that I stayed within the range around each of the scrum blocks so that I didn't invade the space of the next feather that was going to go in there. Here is the free motion quilting all done and I'm spraying it with water and you can see there all of the pretty feathers. It turned out beautifully and you can see a little better on the back. But the real star of this show was definitely the scrum blocks themselves. After it was all said and done, I thought that I probably could have used a different thread color to make the feathers stand out more, but I don't know. I typically use the same white thread all the time. It is so fine by Superior Threads. It's absolutely dreamy. But maybe a darker color on a white quilt would be nice. 
Let me know in the comments if you think that I should have used a darker thread or you like it just the way it is showcasing all of just the scrum blocks. The one thing I did notice using this very thin cotton batting and with this quilt top and this thread was that my quilt top already looked like it was, oh, I don't know how else to say it, but like worn in or used. Um, kind of like after it's been in the washer and the dryer so many times and it gets real supple and soft and drapey. That's kind of the feeling that I had as I was free motion quilting it. To make sure everything was filled in on my quilt top, I did echo around all of the feathers. Now here I went on every single scrum block and just did a meander. Uh, just a very large meander and then I would stop break thread and then go to the next scrum block and I just feel like this made everything connect even better together that batting and the quilt top and here you can see and here's the back of it I mean you can really tell on the back but on the scrum blocks because it's so busy you really can't see it here I'm just trimming off all of the excess batting and I'm cutting right up to the quilt top here I'm just showing you that that blue marker kept peeking through and so I kept repeatedly putting that water on it to get rid of that blue mark. Eventually it did go away. Since my gauze wasn't as wide as my quilt top, I had to piece two pieces together and then trim it down. I found that if I took the rubber band off of the jar, I could put it up on my wrist while I was standing there and I was able to pin that together perfectly. So I put right sides together and I took my basting pins and basted those together just like in the earlier step. Now I could have totally used binding to bind this quilt, but I didn't want to. Once I had all of my pins in, then I sewed all around using a quarter inch seam allowance. I did have a lot of gauze overhang, a lot larger than my quilt, but that was because I had no clue on how this fabric was going to react. So I wanted to err on the side of caution and have extra. <laughs> Once everything is all trimmed up nicely, then it's time to turn it right side out through that opening. I have to say, this is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Next, take your fingers and roll that seam all the way to the edge so it's perfect. And then use your clips. This is a very important step. You don't want to leave that out because we want to make sure that that seam around the entire quilt is nice and flat. You can see here that it's much easier to tuck that seam allowance in that seam when you have a little extra to work with. Once you've clipped all around, then it's time to put a top stitch all around the entire quilt edge. I was anxious to see though if I was going to need to use my walking foot or not because it was sort of thick there at the edge but my machine went through all of it beautifully. After top stitching, I then laid my quilt out and pinned on each scrum block to the gauze back. I took it to my sewing machine and then put two separate one inch tacks on each of the scrum blocks. And that way the back and the front was all going to come together nicely and I was not going to have any gaping at all. So you can see here as I'm lifting up everywhere, there's no gapes and there's no hollow spots. Everything is connected together perfectly. I mean, honestly, I couldn't have been more happy at the way it all connected together. I totally love it without the binding. I don't know. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. On your screen in a second, there will pop up a few videos that I have handpicked just for you if you liked today's tutorial. I mean, you'll probably see something that you've never seen before. Go for it. Click on one of them and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.